Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hoag, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. You speak powerfully, you speak English fluently. You speak English confidently, you speak English effortlessly when you commit to my VIP program, commit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there to EffortlessEnglishClub.com and join, don't just join, but commit, commit, commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Today, just answering questions. So now's your chance. All those people who ask me the same questions, <laughs> I get it again about the different English questions. I know for you, they're new questions. So, yeah, I understand. You're new to the channel. Maybe you haven't heard me answer these questions before. So, no problem. But, you know, for a lot of these questions about directly just about the effortless English method, how to learn vocabulary, how to improve your speaking. You know, I wrote a book about it. It's called Effortless English. You can go to my book website, EffortlessEnglish.com. EffortlessEnglish.com. So no club, just EffortlessEnglish.com. That's the book website. And you can get the audiobook for free if you go to that website. So that's going to tell you everything you need to know. It, it will answer all these questions that I often will ignore uh, because they're not about the topic we're talking about. You know, people have the same questions. How do I improve my vocabulary? You know, how can I be more fluent? How can I improve on the TOEFL exam? So I get these questions, you know, constantly, constantly. And the book answers those questions with a lot of detail. Again, the audiobook is free at EffortlessEnglish.com. The entire audiobook. And then the other thing you can do is uh, join my free email course, which will also explain and answer most of those questions about English, English learning, the Effortless English method, uh, how do my lessons work, all that kind of stuff. My free email course, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. So it's got the club there. Just enter your email and you'll get, uh, I'll send you a series of emails for free explaining and answering all those questions. So today we'll, sometime I think on social media they call this an AMA, Ask Me Anything, Ask Me Anything. So just any questions. They can be about English. They can be about books. I don't care. Call American culture. Whatever. I don't care. Ask me anything. So that's that's our topic. Just easy, relaxed, anything. Right now I got members only uh, turned on for comments. So give members the first chance to ask questions if they have any questions. Um, and then... I'll turn it, I'll open it for everybody. So just hi to Vladislav, hi to Leonardo, and hi to Deepak. Good to see all three of you. We'll also give a minute for people to join. How many how many people do we have? Yep, more people people are still joining the live show. So ask me anything is our topic. <laughs> okay. It can be about English or not. I don't care. I might not answer every question. Probably won't because I won't have time, but uh, but you can certainly try and ask. All right, since uh, this is going to be an Ask Me Anything, I'm going to turn on the questions for everybody. Okay, so now everybody can comment and ask questions. I had another beautiful spring day today here in Japan. Really, really, really nice. What is the full form of AJ? What's my full name? Alan. Alan. A-L-L-E-N. Alan. Alan J is my name. How to be an English native speaker. Ask L-F-X-Z. Now I'm guessing, well, I guess I could take that question two ways. Um, okay. Okay. So maybe you're asking the definition, what does that mean, a native speaker? Or maybe you're asking, how can I speak like a native speaker? <laughs> so these are two different questions. What is a native speaker? A native speaker is someone who learns a language 
in this case English, um, as a child. So you, you speak it as a natural language learned, you know, as a, as a small child usually, as a young child. But, you know, really, mm, what it, I don't know. People who learn a language, uh, kids who learn languages, what, it's somewhere around the age of 12, I think. Depends on the child. But uh, people who learn languages before that age, younger than that age, will usually speak like a native speaker. Right. They will. And the, the one the thing that usually you can that really makes a person sound like a native, like sound like someone who learned as a baby or learned as a small child is the pronunciation. That's really the one that uh, where you can tell. It's a clear sign that perfect pronunciation, that absolutely perfect pronunciation. So that's what a native speaker is. How can you sound like now if you're an adult and you're learning as an adult? How can you sound like that? I don't know. Can you ever sound like that completely? You can get very, very close. I've heard a few adults who have gotten, who are basically sound native. They sound native. Um, yeah, some English teacher somewhere might pick out some little tiny mistake they make or something, but that's just ridiculous. Um, so, I mean, that's a, if that's your question, it's a gigantic topic. <laughs> you need a lot of hours. You've got to... Uh, get a huge amount of input, input, input first, you know, to build up your... Um, it's not so much about vocabulary, actually, because it's really fluency and pronunciation, I think, uh, are the two big ones for sounding like a native speaker. And especially, it's pronunciation. It's definitely not grammar. Definitely not... You don't need perfect grammar. A lot of native speakers, right, people who learn English as their only language, they learn as a baby. But they have terrible grammar, right? They speak horribly, <laughs> according to textbooks. But they're native, right? They sound, they're, it's, it's their pronunciation is, uh, is a big one. And, of course, there are different varieties. You know, they might even have a, a, a specific accent or something. But, and then it's, the, it's that perfect fluency, probably more than anything. So you just need a huge amount of listening primarily with a decent amount of reading. And then you have to work on your pronunciation eventually. When we start, Leonardo says, when we start the movie club again? Um, good question. Probably just, it probably might be another month or two. Uh, basically, I'm letting my babies get a bit older. Their sleep schedule is getting better and better each month. So I'm thinking in, in, in a couple of months, I should be able to have a little extra time to, you know, get prepared for the movies each day, each week and, and get back and we can finish Jerry Maguire finally. <laughs> oh, wow. Suddenly just, this is weird. Like the comments, suddenly it just, YouTube just shows me a huge number. Like they're showing me nothing and then suddenly boom. Vika says how to be consistent towards learning English. I think it's just developing routines, habits, you know, like at night you brush your teeth and in the morning you get up and then, you know, you have a kind of a routine in the morning. So I think it's developing that habit. So it's just part of your day and that's the way to do it. You know, connect it with other things you do every day. Hey, Slavika, good to see you. Vladislav says, people still want to take the TOEFL exam. Most of them just want to go to the USA, Canada, or Australia because they are brainwashed. They don't know the reality or they want to study because they must. Yeah, I mean, obviously people have lots of different reasons um, for going, but I'm not a fan of the TOEFL exam. But but it is used for the many purposes, and uh, some people have to take it if, if you know. Sometimes it's necessary, a necessary evil. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to do it. <laughs> I Sultan says, how lucky you are. I would like to try travel to Japan, especially during Sakura season. Yeah, I am lucky to be here. I like Japan a lot. Quite nice. Another Japan question. Madavi, what do you like most about living in Japan? Oh, many different things. I'd say overall, it's just the culture, the people. 
they are extremely, how should I say it, civilized. <laughs> uh, there's just there, there's just such a high level of politeness and trust and decency uh, among people, you know, just in everyday, just common everyday situations, right? And that includes customer service. Uh, uh, just like even at things like places like convenience stores or a coffee shop, just the level of customer service, the level of politeness among people, the level of uh, respect is, uh, well, I'd say it's the best in the world. Better. It's the best I've ever seen. I've traveled to a good number of countries and it's fantastic. So that would be my answer. Food's good too. Vadim says, uh, AJ, you have such a great and understandable voice. Do you think to do do you think you'll do audiobooks? Well, I have an audiobook. I have one audiobook. If you mean like reading books, other people's books, just it's too much time. But it, it's not actually very fun. <laughs> um even recording my own audiobook, right? The book I wrote, uh it it was not so fun. Um, like I love doing this, but I can just talk. It's, this is natural talking. But with an audiobook, you know, to record it, you have to, you know, you're reading it and you have to get every single word correct. It's word for word and you make a mistake, uh, you stop, uh, back up, do it again. And it takes a long time. You know, I was in a recording studio for days doing that. Um, so I really have no desire to do someone else's book <laughs> and it doesn't pay very much. So, um, if I ever write a book again, I'll do my own audiobook, but otherwise, no. <laughs> and he says, do you recommend studying more than one language in the same day? Yeah, you can. You can do that if you have time. Shah Mahdi says, uh, I'm intermediate. Do you suggest that I watch documentaries with subtitles? Yes. In, um, yeah. Do, do the movie technique. Look on my web on my YouTube channel for a movie technique. Uh, there's a video about it for with lots of detail about how to do it. But um, in general, yes, documentaries would be you can use. Yes, that would be fine. Max K says, AJ, do you think it's a good time to start a business at this time? Uh, yeah, okay. The, my, I mean, that's a very general question, right? I mean, like what kind of business, <laughs> but, um, I think it's always a good time to start a business. Yes. The answer is yes, because it gives you some independence, some self-reliance. It's better than being an employee, right? So overall, yes, it's a good time. Is it a good time to borrow a huge amount of money and go in debt and take a huge risk? No. I would say no. In fact, I'd say it's almost never a good idea to do that, especially your first time trying to start a business. So do it in a low-risk way. So, but yeah, do it. Oh, the questions are coming in fast. I might have to turn on the 60-second thing. <laughs> um Ooh, okay, so sorry guys, I'm trying to catch up. I'm gonna I'm gonna put on the delay here. It, it it keeps it just means you can only comment once every sixty seconds, which is not which is which is fine. It's not that much of a delay, but it just slows everything down a little because it, right now the comments are coming in so fast, it's kind of hard for me to read them. They're moving around too much. Okay. All right, I'm going to have to move faster. There's so many questions. I'm going to answer them more quickly. Uh, all right, I'm just trying to find where I was. Okay, Leonardo says, um, how to deal with the those days in which you feel really bad in English. It happens to me constantly. I would say, th th not only with English, but anything you're doing, uh, on a day you feel bad, go light and do something just for fun and don't worry about performance, right? Um, so like, let's say with exercise, like an example of this would be, you know, let's say you're exercising and then some days when, when you're doing an exercise program, let's say you're running, you're training for a marathon and, uh, some days you feel great. You love getting out there, you run, you run hard, you run long. 
And then some days you really, really, really don't feel like running, right? So what do you do on those days? You go short, you run for just a short distance. Uh, maybe you take extra walking breaks. Maybe you walk extra. I mean, you run extra slowly. You just take a very relaxed, easy day. You don't push too hard. And you, but you just do something, right? And so it's so it would be the same with English, right? Okay, you don't you don't have to do hours and hours on a day where you're really feeling bad. Um, just and just maybe do something different. Listen to something kind of easy that you just that you like just for fun. No pressure, right? Something like that. Just just kind of take an easy day, basically. Devish Kumar says, "Any plans to come to India? Uh, no specific plans, but I would love to go back to India someday. Quite like India. I have so many amazing memories of India." Ilana Khan says, can you recommend a book or explain a little about the cause for the Civil War of America and the Confederacy? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> that is a big question. It is a question a lot of people will debate. Um, let's just say it's very complex. Uh, the, the cause, it, it was not just slavery. That's the, that's the kind of propaganda reason, uh, but certainly not the case. Um, you know, the war, the Confederacy... Um, it was really an unnecessary war, completely unnecessary. The Confederates, the South, just basically left. They just said, we want to leave America. We want, we want to just become our own in independent country. And the North said, no, you can't do that. And then they invaded the South. There were economic reasons. There were all kinds of reasons. Um, it's pretty complicated. I, and it's, uh, I, I can't even say that I know exactly because it's, uh, I'm not a super expert. Uh, can I recommend a book? You probably would need to read a few books about the... I'll have to look into this, actually. Shelby Foote. A name just popped into my head. I'll type it. I think is an is has a bunch of books about the Civil War. Shelby Foote. I just put it in the comments. Let me look him up. Look at that. An American writer and journalist who wrote The Civil War, a narrative, a three-volume history of the American Civil War. There you go. From Mississippi, so he's not a damn Yankee who's going to give you a bunch of lies and propaganda and make it oversimplified. Uh, I've heard, actually, that, he's, that his history of the Civil War is excellent. So look at that. I do know somebody I can recommend. Here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Shelby Foote. It's F-F-O-T-E. Shelby. S-H-E-L-B-Y is his first name. Shelby Foote. Now, I, I, you know what? I might even get that someday. That sounds kind of cool. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's going, so this is a big one. <laughs> okay. You're at, you, this is a serious, this is three large books about the Civil War. So this is not just some so, small thing, but, um, yeah, that I think he, I, I've heard good things about that one. So amazing how these th things just pop back into your brain when someone asks you a question. Okay, so cool. Elana Khan, if you go with Shelby Foot, let me know. Okay, I'm going to have to jump to the bottom and try to work my way backwards here. Let's see. Amir says, have you ever heard of Jim Quick's method? I believe he's the memory guy, if I'm not mistaken. He says genuine, I'm not sure what that means, uh, fluency maybe, can be achieved. Maybe he means near, near native. Uh, you can learn language in a few months, depending what you mean by learn. Uh, please, if you can, check him out. I will, I'll check him out. I think I've seen maybe one of his videos. Merson says, okay, this sounds interesting. After living in the UK for two years, I've noticed British want to sound more noble when they speak. Some British. And Americans seem to be more casual while speaking. That's the stereotype. At least that's my observation. Yeah, that's the stereotype. It's certainly among, you know, so-called educated, you know, in other words, like college educated middle class type people. Um, that fits kind of the general... Yes, Americans are very casual. I do find British a little more. They're, they're speaking to be a bit more formal. 
right? The style of their speaking, the the, the kind of sentences, structures they use, uh, it is yes, a bit more a bit more formal. And Americans are very casual, that's for sure. We don't like formality at all. So yes, I'd say that's overall correct. Okay, Med goes, he says, my question is kind of weird. I'm so motivated to listen to English more than eight hours per day. Awesome. For two years. But now when I want to study for my exam, I fall asleep and lose my motivation. I'm not sure what your question is. Maybe you're asking why. Probably because it's boring. <laughs> right? I'm guessing that those eight hours a day you're doing with English, are it's all interesting content. It's all interesting reading and listening that you want to do, real English. And then... You know, studying for an exam, that's all fake textbook type stuff. And you probably just immediately your brain just says, this is boring and, you, and you're not completely uninterested. Uh, so I imagine that's why it seems natural to me. Andre says, can you explain to me the meaning of put up? Uh, I could have a few different meanings. I need give me a sentence, please, because uh, it, uh, it 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 depends. How to increase focus while listening or reading? Um, do some meditation. Learn some basic meditation. Just just basic like breath concentration. It'll improve your concentration for everything. Julia Takita says, uh, do you know that we have an amazing uh, amazing EE members of my Skype group who already have a podcast in English? I did not know that. Send me the link on Gab, please, and we'll, I'll promote it next time. Hey, Juan, how are you doing? I'm doing well, very well, thank you. <laughs> Balabiev says, I want to say that you are better than Tony Robbins. I guess it depends on what better at what. <laughs> but thank you. It's a nice compliment. Uh, Arun, I don't know. I don't think I can answer this question. How to develop leadership skills and communication skills to become an army officer. Well, I've never been an army officer. I would say um, the closest I could tell you would be to read a bunch of books by army officers, you know, people who, you know, I, I kind of like the Navy SEAL books. There's some good ones by, I'm just going by the American military, um, by former Navy SEALs about leadership and uh, toughness and rangers, you know. But um, that's as close as I can tell you because I, I don't really know specifically. I've never been in the military. Have I ever been the member of a jury in a trial? I ha no. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have not. One time I was called for jury duty, it's called, but uh, rejected. Didn't want me. They typically don't want um, people who think too much. It's, it's a pretty corrupt system in America. I mean, Ahmad Salim says, do you miss America a lot? No. Are you going to visit after the end of the coronavirus? Um, I'll probably visit next year sometime is the plan. But it has nothing to do with the virus. Patul Ali says, what can I do to increase my vocab if I don't like reading? Well, you're getting rid of the... Reading is the best by far. I mean, you could, do you like listening to audiobooks? If so, then that would be the number two, I guess. Listen to audiobooks and things like that. You know, listen to kind of a wide range of topics. And then you'll have to, it's harder though, because you have to just learn by kind of guessing the meaning of things. Whereas with, uh, when you're reading, you can actually look up the word very quickly if you have an ebook. But maybe, I guess that's the second best. <laughs>
<laughs> Igor says a lot of media says a lot of weird things about Japan. A lot of low age of sexual consent, special places for perverts. Um, buy her underwear. Is it one hundred percent false? It's not one hundred percent false. No, but it's um, it's exact. You know, every country has weirdos. You know, this is the thing, uh, and so the media is focusing on this. I'm sure we could go to Russia and find uh, a bunch of people with weird sexual things, and then do news stories about them, and then and then pretend that that's normal for Russia when it's not normal, right? We could you can certainly do that for America. You can find all kinds of heart, crazy stuff and and everything you can you can find it in almost every country people thailand is another example people say oh yeah all thai girls are prostitutes no they're not not even close right but that's what the media focuses on they focus on the weird and the bizarre so it's not n the normal japanese person at all prakash says i'm going to leave i asked several questions but you didn't explain you're acting like a child i you're not the only one in this chat if you do it again i'm going to block you <laughs> I'm sure. What is the solution for procrastination? Hmm. I'm a bad person to ask because I do procrastinate a lot. Um, <laughs> for me, the answer is prioritize. What does that mean? It means you have to know, um, you have to be clear in your mind. What is very important to you? What's less important? What's less important than that? Right? So you're ranking. So I'm very good at, de I'll decide like what's the top thing, right? The top couple things in my life that are most important to me, right? Long term, not today or tomorrow, but long term. So my family, my health and exercise, things like that. Um, effortless English, right? And so those things I'll do every single day. And I, there's no procrastination at all. But then there are other things which, uh, you know, which are smaller, more little detail things, little, you know, little, little jobs or things I'm, I need to do. And those I do procrastinate on, you know, as, as when, when a job or something I need to do is, is less important to me, then it, I tend to procrastinate and push it back and push it back and push it back. But it's never been a problem for me. And this is kind of a Taoist mindset, which is, you know. Put your energy on the most important things, and then as things become less important, maybe you do procrastinate because uh, maybe you, you have limited time or energy or motivation. So focus it on the things that are most important. That's the way I think about it. Yusuf Ahmad says, How do writers remember adjectives? or words they use in their description. For example, vocabulary terms used in the best of Sherlock Holmes. How do they remember? Um, you know, they just know them from reading. Um, most professional writers, good prof good writers, let's just say good writers. <laughs> good writers are usually r r good readers, okay? So I'm sure, I don't know specifically, but I'm sure Sir Arthur Conan Doyle read a lot, a lot, a lot of books during his lifetime. And so he just learned all that vocab. And then when he started to write, you know, it naturally came to him. So that's that's the way. They're not memorizing or trying to remember adjectives specifically uh, or, or vocab, I don't think. Uh, I think that's what you'll find is that they're, they read a lot. Good writers are good readers and they read a huge amount or they have read a lot amount when, uh, when they were younger. So, but I says, teach me about your business success. How did you reach people for the first time? How did you train your voice? How did I reach people for the first time? I started a blog. <laughs> Not, uh, I mean, now it's effortlessenglishclub.com, but I, it was a written blog. And so this was way back uh, before the business even, before, you know, this, this is... It's, it's a good way to start a business online, even maybe even offline, uh, is first build an audience, 
right, for what you're doing. And then start like an actual business to serve those people, right? And then when you start the business, you already have potential customers who know you and like you and trust you. So I had a blog and I was, I first, I was just writing about my teaching ideas and uh, people started to find it and they liked it and the, the number of people reading it grew and grew and grew. And then they started saying, you should make lessons, you know, and I thought, yeah, I should. And I did. And then they started buying them. And then I just built the business from there. So it grew from there. Uh, how did you train your voice? The, the main voice training I did, I actually did for about a year. I did singing lessons, but it was something called speech level singing. I think it's what it's called. S S L S. I think that's right. Speech level singing. It's a specific technique of singing. And, uh, I, I'm not a great singer, but it did, it actually helped me because I was, I actually started doing it because I was doing some live events at that time where I was doing public speaking and I would do long, like six hours or something or eight hours, really long ones. And my voice was getting destroyed, right? <laughs> at the end, like the next day, I couldn't even talk. You know? So I, I wanted to learn how to sort of control my voice better and uh, be able to have a strong voice without destroying it. So I started learning some of the techniques and, and taking the singing lessons. And it was fun. It was fun kind of doing a little singing too. And um, yeah, that's it. I mean, a lot of it for me was just learning to relax my throat. I used to tighten my throat up. I still do. Sometimes it's a bad habit, but uh, not much anymore. But I used to tighten my throat up a lot. <laughs> So speech level singing, you could take singing. Um, it's also good for speaking. The same, it's, it's, the, the techniques are, can be used with speaking also. Amanda Jordal says, what are, who are your favorite authors? My, some of my favorite authors are Henry David Thoreau, uh, Alan Watts, Tolkien, obviously, J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, Not as much now, but uh, I used to quite like um, Jack Kerouac. I still do like a couple of his books, but not not into him so much anymore. Um, yeah, we're talking about fiction, I guess. So yeah, that, those would be the ones, I guess, right now. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Tolkien, Thoreau, Kerouac. Mm-hmm. Alan Watts, who's nonfiction, by the way. Let us to know how to be a military officer. You should go to the military. Well, indeed, they they will train you. <laughs> they will indeed. Do you plan to do a casual show again at Twitch? Asked Vladislav. Yes, I will. That was kind of fun. I should have done that today. Oh, well, next time. Vadim says, will all of our challenges be about English or will we do something else like a workout challenge? I think we're going to do something else next time, not English. Maybe it work. I'm thinking something with exercise because um, personally, I, I need to get back exercising. This year with the babies has been very... Um, there's a lot of stress in the beginning of the year and uh, yeah, just been tough and sleep, not sleep. But anyway, I've kind of let my exercise and fitness go down. So some kind of exercise challenge might be a good idea. We'll see. Did you read Mercia Eliad? He wrote about history of religion and the mystic India. I have never heard of him or her. When you read, when we read books in English, do you recommend reading out loud or not? Ask Sandra. It's your choice. You don't have to. Don't have to. You can read silently. It's, it's really what you prefer. If you're working on pronunciation, of course, you can do it. 
Uh, but if you're just just wanting to read for vocab and enjoyment, you can read silently. It's fine. My teacher told me beginners have to think about grammar when they speak. Is that true? Uh, have to? No, you don't have to. I mean, you can sort of get by just with vocabulary and terrible grammar. <laughs> uh, like little kids do, like little babies do. Hadi says, when I listen to your videos or other teachers, I speed up the video to challenge myself. What's your opinion about that? If you enjoy it, that's fine. Yeah, if you like it, why not? Do I believe in Noam Chomsky's theory, competence and performance? No, I'm not. I'm not actually such a fan of him. I'm, I, I'm not talking about his politics, just talking about language. <laughs> Arun says, I've watched the movie They Live. It was interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know if you catch the humor. It's There's a lot of kind of humor in it. It's not meant to be too serious. Juan Alarte says, I think we can speak more English by listening and writing more. Listening carefully and trying to improve your writing by practice. Repetition is important. Mm-hmm. Marvin says, <laughs> what is your advice for overweight people watching TV shows? Turn off the TV and fast. <laughs> That's it. It's actually pretty simple. Throw away the TV. Fast. Watch, the, watch snake diet videos on YouTube. You'll lose all the weight you need. Oh, Andres, you're asking about the the Alan Watts quote with put up and shut up. Let me read. Let me. I need to show that. See if I can find it on my gab real quick. I meant to answer that on, during the show anyway, so let's do it if I can find it. Here it is. Okay. All right, so this Andres is asking about this quote from an Alan Watts book, one of my favorite writers. Here it goes. Now, it's still, we're only, we're only getting a piece of this. It would help to read the whole chapter. But So it's talking about Zen. It says, okay, so it's talking about Western people, like you know, as in Europeans and Americans, who have undergone some of the special training of Renzai Zen, a specific type of Zen. And they tend to become cagey, meaning uh, a little nervous, and uncommunicative on the principle that those who know do not speak, those who speak do not know. Although, however, they do not put up, they do not completely shut up. All right, put up or shut up. What he's trying to play with is there's a idiom in English, put up or shut up. Put up means do, do something. Here means, in this case, it means do something. Put up, it, it, you know, put up or shut up means do something or be quiet. It means don't just talk, do something, right? So if, let's say somebody's talking and they say, yeah, 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 I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to start my own business, I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm, and they're just talking, 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 you can say, put up or shut up. And it, it basically means... Um, you know, show me, you know, do something and stop talking. So they do not put up means they don't really show anything, but they don't completely shut up means they don't talk. 
Okay, so here, here, what he's saying is, and then now the more general meaning of what this whole paragraph is talking about. On the, on the one hand, he says they would love to share their understanding with others. But on the other hand, they're convinced that words are ultimately futile, meaning um, pointless. And they are under an agreement not to discuss certain aspects of their training. Okay, so he's saying that, okay, in Zen, you know, the idea, Zen, so he's saying they have this training, these guys from, these are like Americans, let's say you go to Japan, and they learn, they study at a Zen monastery, and then they come back and people ask them questions, what's Zen, what's Zen, what's, what is it like, and he's saying that they, they usually, uh, they, they, they really won't talk about it very much, uh, and the reason is they because they don't trust words because Zen is a, an experience, meditation in general, uh, spiritual experiences in general, are experiences that are beyond words, right? They cannot be explained with words. And when you try, when you try to explain them in words, uh, they it's you never do it really well, right? It it never really the person never totally understands right so let's say in zen you have this experience of total peace and calm and your mind is completely clear and someone asks you what's that like how do you explain that how can you actually describe it because the the experience is there's no words there are no thoughts in your mind it's clear and peaceful you can say oh it's clear and peaceful but that really doesn't communicate the full level and and of of what's happening and how you feel and how you you know the, what the experience is like no words can totally describe it so he's saying what they do then they just say well you go and find out yourself you have to experience it which is actually it's quite you know the buddha kind of said this a few times when people ask would ask buddha about god is there a god is there a god what's tell us about god he wouldn't answer. He wouldn't answer the question. He ba it was basically, he had the same, he said, meditate, follow the path, and find out. Right? He, he refused to give, uh, just give an answer. He said, you have to find out yourself. You have to experience this yourself, and then you'll know. So it's that kind of thing that he's, Alan Watts is talking about. How to be a solo traveler without a permanent job. Well, I taught English. <laughs> uh, the other way you do it is you you live very cheaply, very simply in at, at home, in your home country. And you save most of your money, and then you travel the countries that are cheap. And you, you know, you travel on a small, small budget. If you can, you camp or you stay in the cheapest backpacking places and uh, yeah you can do it Southeast Asia is pretty cheap India is very cheap to travel in and uh, yeah that's how you do it do you Cleefy asks, do you focus on reading one book till the last page or diversify more books in the same time? With nonfiction books, uh, I just tend to read a lot of books at the same time. But I read very fast for nonfiction books. I, I zoom through them very fast. Unless they have something very interesting and detailed, I'll slow down. But uh, a lot of them I'll go through very quickly. So I might read them in one night. Oh, yeah. Carol is the admin of our special group, says Slavika. I suggest that you sometimes be her. Be, oh, be our special guest. Yeah, I'll join you guys. I'll chat with you. Uh, 
and you, one of you guys can uh, be my guest <laughs> on this show. How about that? We'll do a trade. Connect with me on Gab. We'll figure it out. Sarah says, I prefer the, a walking challenge. We can count our daily steps. Yeah, I like, it's kind of what I'm thinking, actually, Sarah. Walking. We can count steps or we could count time. Either way. Or distance. Time is the easiest to count, right? Obviously, you just look at your watch. Um, that's a good idea. Julia says, I love to sing in English and Japanese. It improves pronunciation. Nice. Your baby's crying. Yeah, he's, he's he just finished eating. Marcin says, what do you think about Brexit? Yeah, good luck to the British. <laughs> do you think the, EU, the EU will fall because of it? Ah... Uh, I don't I don't follow the details of European politics honestly um I think the EU probably will gener is long term it's it's probably going to fall not because of just the British but I imagine that you know it's an it's a globalist you know fairly evil organization and I think the individual countries are a lot of the individual countries are getting sick of it uh and so I think there's a decent chance, just looking from the outside, that more and more countries will leave. And that's what's going to eventually take it down. Is it something that was planned by the evil elite bankers? Definitely. Absolutely it is. It's completely undemocratic. It's, it's, uh, it's a way to try to destroy the individual European nations and their cultures. Obviously, you can see they've been trying to do that. So I'm glad they're failing in that because of that. Because, yeah, I wish you know, Europe is the homeland of most Americans. So we, we wish our, <laughs> our home countries, our ancestors' countries, we, we wish them well. And we hope they will preserve and keep their cultures. Zakaria says, I never give up. I'm actually in the middle. I'm in the mini story, Baseball Pig. Thank you. <laughs> one of my favorite mini stories, Baseball Pig. Yeah, that's a good one. Am I completely satisfied about my life? Pretty much, yes. Yes. Yeah. Sneha says uh, a related idiom. Put up and shut up. A related idiom is actions speak louder than words. Yeah, right. Same, similar ideas. Similar. Mari says, what does this mean? Take a hike. I just watched a movie. Take a hike means take a hike means leave. Go away. Take a hike. Go away. Oh, do I still want to interview the challenge leaders? Yes. I'll... I'm slow with interviews because I have to set them up and schedule them and uh, get busy doing other things. But uh, I do plan to still do that. Ahmad Salim says, my daughter's almost 10 years old. Sooner I, soon I will start English storytelling with her. What do you recommend uh, to, to, for making it? Especially uses of tenses. Just follow, kind of do it the same way as my mini stories. You just you keep it simple with a 10-year-old. You don't have to do anything complicated. Past, present, future. Mix it up.
How about the book Zen and the Art of Archery? It's a nice book. I read it a long time ago, so I don't remember a lot of it, but I remember it was pretty good. Hey, Albert Amani, good to see you. <laughs> XPV says, you're truly a king. I joined the stream. I, I hear you preaching about how the elite is dismantling the European cultures. They are failing. We will fight back. Yeah, they're going to fail, I think. They, they're, they were trying. They are trying. They will continue trying. But uh, I think in many ways, uh, it seems Europe is uh, stronger than America in that in that regard, you know, in that related to that. And that's, I'm happy to see that. Obviously, Americans roots are in Europe, so we have that connection. Shaman Jha says, you are an international trainer. All the best. Thank you. Okay, Javad says, most of what I'm planning to do, I leave it halfway. So you kind of stop halfway through. I feel frustrated halfway. I'm suffering from this bad habit. What's your advice to me? Hmm. Um... It may not be best such a bad thing. I, I I do this too with a lot of things. Um, again, you know, I'm I'm not. I kind of I'm I'm a Taoist at heart, <laughs> and uh, so that means I I don't like forcing things too much. And so I do this a lot. I I do probably most things that I try, with hobbies, skills, learning something. I do it for a while, and then I get bored or frustrated or whatever, and I stop and I go to something else. But not always. There are a few things that, for, for, for some reason, whatever reason, that I really love or that are really, really important to me. And those things I continue doing and have become quite good. For example, effortless English, this business, teaching English and doing this business. And uh, learning how to podcast and these things. I love doing them, doing every day. Didn't stop halfway, kept going. Uh, and there are a few other things in my life where that's true. But then most of the things I just tried. So I, I'd say maybe don't worry about it. Just keep going. And, and just find those, find the few things in life that really are important to you, that you really love, and then you don't have to force yourself. You will naturally keep going. That's been my experience. So give it a try. Okay. Hi from Italy. Hello, Alessandra. I like to read self-development books, says Madi. What do you think? I think it's great. They're generally positive. That's the great thing. So even the ones that are, you know, like you might find in self-development books, a lot of them are, I mean, there's nothing much. You, you get one, it's nothing new. It's kind of repeating the same stuff that all the other ones say. But on the other hand, it usually is something positive at least right it's it's so even the even the bad ones are, are at least generally it's feeding your brain something positive which is much better than watching the fake news or watching tv or something like that so overall yes great do you like stephen king have you read any of his books says as sasha <sighs> no actually i don't like him i have read i read the shining i read the stand i read it maybe that's all he has the same pattern. He can't end a story. His endings, in my opinion, his endings suck. So, like, on one hand, like, I can see the potential with him. So, on the one hand, he's really great at starting a story, building up the tension, right? Building it up and building up this tension and this kind of this amazing 
story, whether it's fear or whatever. So the stand was amazing in the beginning. The shining the same. It, I don't remember very much, honestly. I can't remember that one. But those two. But then the endings, I, he he has the most idiotic, stupid endings. I can't, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand how he can ha- write such a great beginning and then just end it in such an incredibly stupid way. Um, so, in the, for example, The Shining. The Shining is maybe the only example I can think of. Certainly right now, it's the only example I can think of where I think the movie is better than the book, right? Almost always we say, oh, the book's better, right? Lord of the Rings, books, much better. The Hobbit, books, much better. Pretty much any book I've read, if they made a movie, the book is always better, except for The Shining. (laughs) The Shining, the movie's better. And a lot of it is because the ending, the ending of the movie is great. Also, it was a really fantastic director, um, Stanley Kubrick. So he kind of re- he kind of fixed Stephen King's um, weaknesses, and then the stand started really inter- as a really interesting story, and then the end is ridiculous, really stupid. So, um, so overall, I don't like him, and that's why I don't read any more of his books. But a lot of people love him. Obviously, he's super popular. So it's, that's just my that's my review of Stephen King. Manisha Singh says, if you like listening to the American accent, don't turn on the British one. Is this true? No, you can listen to both. Can we listen to both British and American? Yes. You can listen to both accents. It's totally fine. Uh, Leonardo says, um, are your children learning Japanese and English at the same time? Yes. Everything good with the boy? Yes. The boy, he's doing great. He's really been doing fantastic the last uh, few months. Really, really doing well. So thank you for asking. And in terms of language, yes, my wife speaks Japanese to them and I speak English to them. So they're learning both. And they kind of... you know they don't they're not really speaking yet maybe it's hard to say you know they 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 say they make noises i don't know if they're actually saying words or not but uh but they they understand um a mix of japanese and english sasha are you vegetarian i'm not anymore no what is your opinion about it i think that like the like kind of just vegetarian not vegan um yeah i think it can be done well um, but, uh, I'm not anymore. I'm, I'm more what I would, when I'm eating healthy, healthily, I'm, uh, probably kind of pay, paleo primal is, would be just avoiding carbs. The problem with vegetarian for me is that it's almost impossible to be low carb and vegetarian. It's very hard. Uh, and I, there's a lot of diabetes in my family and overall, I find I feel much better and much healthier when I eat very low carb. I might ask, I like Turkish coffee. How do you like yours? Um, I typically just a little bit of milk, no sugar. And it's um, not Turkish style, but just, just kind of, you know, brewed or even... In the summer, I like cold. I like iced coffee, cold brewed coffee. Just, but just a little milk, not much, and no sugar. All right, a couple more. I'm gonna, I'll go about an hour today, and then, uh, and then we're done. Everyone says, I'm a vegan. Yeah, no worries. You know, you just got to... Vegan's very tough, very strict, so you got to really know what you're doing, I think, to get 
Um, you know, the thing about diet, what I found is that I think people are different. You know, I think different body types, um, different lifestyles, different health um, histories, family health situations. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know that there's one diet for everybody, right? So like my friend Joe is vegan and he seems to do very well in a vegan diet. He seems like he's fine. Uh, when I tried to be vegan, it was a nightmare. <laughs> I was miserable. My wife was miserable when we, she was really unhealthy. Um, so, you know, What's the traditional food in Japan? Asked Mari. And do you like Japanese food? I love Japanese food. Well, there's the traditional, there's a huge amount of, it, it's, that's a, I, I can't even name it all. There's so much, you know, J Japanese um, cuisine, right? Meaning the um, spe Jap specific Japanese food, there's, there's, it's just a huge, gigantic amount, right? of all different styles it's it, that's a very complicated topic so um yes it's fantastic <laughs> it's very healthy too very healthy abraham says is the keto diet good um i would just say yeah low carb keto's decent um i i find like a strict keto diet can be is can be very hard to maintain uh unless the easiest way to get ketosis um, as Cole Robinson said, it's just a fast. That's the super <laughs> simple, easy way. Ketosis means you're, you're not burning sugar. You're burning pure fat in your body. Just do fasting, do longer fasts, and you will always be doing that. Do you know about Ramadan fasting? Yes, we've talked about fasting here many times. Is my wife Japanese? Yes. Okay, a couple more, and then time to go. Pretty says, are reality shows and talk shows good for learning English? Talk shows are okay. Uh, reality shows, it depends. Sometimes there are a lot of strange people screaming and yelling, and it's maybe not so good. It depends on what kind of reality show. Uh, talk show is just people just sitting and talking about something, asking questions and answering them, usually pretty easy. Um, the comedians might be more difficult if they're telling jokes because those can be very cultural, maybe hard to understand. But if you're just listening to like actors and book write, you know, authors and people like that, just talking and answering questions, that's usually pretty good, pretty simple to understand and fairly common direct English. So that should be fine. My experience is about the snake diet. Uh, as Sony, uh, fantastic, love it, great. What? Subscribe to his YouTube channel, Snake Diet on YouTube, till they kick him off. He's on BitChute also, Snake Diet. Love him, love that guy. Love him, love him, love him. One of my relatives is doing seventy-two hour fast. Great. He lost four kilos in three days. Yeah, that's about right. Do you think it's good? Yes, it's great. That's totally fine. Let's see, yeah, four kilos in three days. I would, I, when I was, when I fasted, when I was fasting for weight loss, I was losing about one, I was losing about half a kilogram a day. But I wasn't very fat. So it's, it's, as you get more thin, it's harder to do, <laughs> right? Your body starts to hold on to the fat more. Uh, if you're really fat, your body will just burn it. Seems keto is a little flexible. Yeah, keto can be done flexibly. It can. <laughs> Mustafa says, I'm from Turkey, but I don't like Turkish coffee. It's too strong for me. Yeah, when I was in Istanbul, uh, I liked it. I like Turkish coffee. Mm -hmm. 
but it's strong. It is very strong. How did you change not being a vegetarian? Uh, how did I do it? Um, let's see. What's the first thing I ate? Uh, scallops. <laughs> I think it was scallops. I started eating scallops. Seafood. Okay, Kong Tan says, my family and I have created a business. I have a lot of thought on this. Good. Can you share how I can grow up my company? My major is... Oh, so I learned an electrician. <sighs> well, I mean, basically... Okay, so you've got the product or the service. So... A nice way to think about business. I can't remember where I read this, but I read it somewhere, and it's perfect. That there are really two essentials in business. There, especially for small business, there's two things you need. Okay, you need a product or a service, something to sell, and then you need customers, <laughs> which is so. Basically, what that is is you know it's it's what you do, and then marketing, and so you know what you're doing now. You have your your service or your product. I'm guessing it's a service. So. You've got to learn marketing, 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 marketing. I would learn direct marketing, direct marketing. Get some books by Dan Kennedy, Dan, D-A, here, I'll type it in the chat. D-A-N and then K-E-N-N-E-D-Y, Dan Kennedy. He's got a bunch of books on direct marketing. Direct marketing is the topic. And uh, he's got ones for different, all kinds of different things, but just... Read a bunch of them. And you can find, of course, there are a lot of books on this topic by other people. He's a good one to start with. He's, he's, he's been doing it a long, long, long time. Not just internet, but uh, newspaper, radio, <laughs> um, internet, everything. And, uh, I mean, that's the big thing. You've got to get customers. You have to attract customers. This is the big battle. Once you have your product or your service... Then the rest of the time in your business is really focused on finding and attracting customers. So you've got to become an expert really on marketing. And now it's very important you do direct marketing because there are many other kinds of marketing. There's the kind of marketing they teach in business schools, in colleges, which is basically bullshit. Uh, I guess it works for gigantic billion dollar companies, but billion dollar companies, mostly they're just interested in propaganda. They're not even necessarily trying to sell anything. So for real businesses, you've got to do direct marketing because direct marketing is marketing to get sales okay, and, and not lose money. <laughs> okay, very important. So that's the style of marketing you want to learn and practice. It'll take a while. But that, that will help your business. So there you go. Learn it. Read about it. Practice it. Study it. Become an expert on direct marketing. And you will succeed. How long have you been a teacher? As English, mifiker, im, do you speak it? <laughs> okay. Uh, how long have you been a teacher? Uh, uh, since 1991 it was my first job. And good luck, Kong, by the way. Hope, hope you're successful. I think you will be. Just learn it. Just learn direct marketing. Do you have new goals in the future? Asks Ibrahim Khalil. Let's see. Um, yeah, you know, most of my goals right now are focused on my family. So we're going to uh, get land in the countryside. Well, we have land, really, I guess. We're, and uh, build a house and 
make a household, and then I want to do some, learn how to grow food, some food. <laughs> so this, these are kind of my, my goals right now, and doing, doing homeschooling with my kids. Okay, time for me to go. My wife's got to go to bed. All right, guys, lots of love to you. I hope you are doing well, having a great day. Thanks for all the interesting questions. Sorry I couldn't answer all of them. You guys were typing a huge number. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed the show. I will see you next time. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Lots of love to you. Bye for now.